Okay, so now I'm going to talk about time, teaching time in the early years. And of course, teaching time, children to tell the time, understand time, is one of the hardest things we do. But the, the fact of the matter is children find the whole concept of time difficult. And with very young children, we start on two levels, one with long-term time and one with short-term time. So long-term time is planning for events in the future. So we tend to say, you know, Granny's coming to stay, Nana's coming to stay in three weeks' time. Three weeks doesn't mean anything to a small child, but as it approaches, we can start making it meaningful by counting the sleeps. So we say, Nana will be here in four sleeps. Nana will be here in three sleeps. And counting down the number of sleeps is really helpful for children to starting to get an idea that we can think about things that are happening in the future and that we can measure between now and that future event. And sleeps is probably the easiest way for young children to measure time in that sense. You can then lead into the notion of a day and how many days and eventually to how many weeks and so on. But starting by the idea that we can actually measure the distance between now and something that's about to happen is really important. The other side of time is the notion of short-term time. That is to say hours, minutes, seconds. And we kind of start that with the structure of the day. So we say, you know, we get up in the morning and there will be some discussion in every household about the time in the morning. People will say, it's nearly eight o'clock, we need to hurry. So children will hear that type of language about clocks and o'clock. And the o'clock times can be used to structure the day. So we sort of, we get up at seven o'clock, we have our breakfast at eight o'clock, we go to school at nine o'clock. We're structuring the day, dinners at midday or 12 o'clock. That notion is used to sequence the day. And children soon get in, especially once they've started school, into that sequence of the day. And then we can match that verbal and experiential notion to the clock face. And we can, first of all, recognise o'clock times. Moving from that to teaching children how to tell the time is quite a subtle business. And I always think that the pink and blue clock is a really good way in year one and year two of taking that forward. We, we divide the clock, literally the clock face, into pink for past and blue for two. So literally the clock has a line drawn down the middle of it and this bit's pink and this bit's blue. So as the hand moves round the clock we have past times, quarter past, past pink, pink for past, 20 past, 25 past, half past, it's all in the pink. As we then move on round the clock is in the, the blue bit, 25 two, quarter two, 10 two two for blue. So therefore, the pink and the blue do then give us that visual way of thinking whether we're counting the minutes past the hour or we're counting the minutes to the hour. To start with, I really focus only on the quarters. Quarter past, half past, quarter two. Two for blue, pink for past. And we really focus on that because if they get those four things, o'clock, quarter past, half past, quarter two, if they get those, they can basically tell the time. Because we do approximate with time. We say it's nearly quarter two. It's just gone half past. Oh my goodness, it's nearly two o'clock. We approximate all the time. It's actually relatively unusual for us to need an exact time to the minute. That's relatively unusual. So for children, it's really good if they can tell the time. Because I just say to them, look at the clock and tell me what it is. And they say, oh, it's nearly half past. So it's either just gone quarter past or it's nearly half past. And then we move to actually counting in fives. Five past, ten past, quarter past, twenty past. And that's absolutely fine for year two. As long as we can tell the time to five minutes, in practical terms, that's what we need. Translating from that to the digital clock is very easy because I've understood the basic concept of time, which is that I can measure it, and I can measure it in minutes, and ultimately, of course, in seconds. If you want to see some activities which do precisely this using the pink and blue clock, then do click on the, the link below.